Welcome back. It's time to buy or sell, guys. We're usually talking about what Tommy Wilden Jr. is wearing, maybe a little bit too much at times. <laughs> but now we're talking about what he's saying post game. Let's roll the clip. He thought they should have scored 15 goals on Wednesday night. Well, Tommy, scoring woes seem to have come to an end tonight. Well, we were magnificent, weren't we? I thought it could have been about 15. I'm, I'll have to have a look at the uh, highlights. I'm sure a couple of those not given were given and should have had a penalty. But you know what? The lads enjoyed themselves, expressed themselves, and that was only after three days being on the training ground. So uh, I said last time, give me 100 days. I think after three days, we've, uh, we've corrected some uh, concerns. All right, guys, buy or sell. Calvary should have scored 15 against York 9 to Ollie Platt. Yeah, sure, I'll buy. Why not? Um, no, obviously not 15. Well, how many should they score then? Give me a realistic number. Well, I think it should have been at least five. Okay, okay. Um, and it could have been six or seven quite easily. Um, it was a dominant performance, and it was a York 9 team that, as well as the turnovers, as Mike mentioned earlier in the show, it was a team that 2 1 after half time was throwing numbers forward, trying to get back in the game and just did so in a really reckless way and, and Cavalry took advantage. I'll sell. I think 15 is a little extreme. <laughs> We're taking that 14. Yeah, Mike is just 14, taking literally today. 14 yeah. maybe, but 15 is too extreme. I, I, listen, the way York played in that game, um, it could have easily been 6-7, maybe 8. As you mentioned, at 2-1 going into the second half, All York right. had to throw everyone forward. Um, they, they just didn't, they didn't look there on the night, and, uh, and Calvary uh, certainly took advantage. All right, this next one involves us maybe taking a closer look at what Nathan Ingham did Wednesday night. But are we buying or selling a change in goal for York 9? Should Silva start for York 9? in Edmonton as we see what the heck was Nathan Ingham doing at Spruce Meadows. Yeah, just Nathan Ingham seeming to lose his cool a little bit here. He has a collision with Pasquati where I think... Why does he go back? Well, yeah. There's no need to go yeah. back. I think in the first instance, Ingham sticks his shoulder out for no reason. We'll see it again here as Pasquati runs across him. And then, yeah, going back and then putting another hand on him is even worse. I, I just think York 9 would benefit from a calmer presence at the back right now, and I think Matt Silva could be that guy. Yeah, I would say that frustration is building for Nathan Ingham and that entire York team I will buy that I think Silva should start in Edmonton. Ingham is still yeah. the number one keeper in my mind, but I think he, he would be best served by having uh, a, a game off to just sort of catch his breath. I don't think we've even, even seen Silva yet this season, but for me with Ingham, it goes back well before this. It's about the penalty they conceded against Montreal that, that led to the 2-2 draw in the Canadian Championship. It's about having two goals from midfield scored on you in situations where that didn't need to happen. I think a little change for one or two games could be good. Um, Don Malonga, I, I kind of teased that we hear a little bit of sound from him as well. Tommy Wilden thought that the team should score 15. Don Malonga, a bit of arrogance, but I liked it. Thought he should have scored four goals. Yeah. Don, thanks for taking the time. Congrats on the win. Two goals from you tonight. Yeah, it was more than two. <laughs> How many do you think you should have had? Probably four. Actually four. I don't know. I don't know what happened on on the offside. She said offside because she said uh, someone was in front of uh, of the goalie, but he was he was he was not even offside. So they take me away one goal, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Buy or sell. Don Malonga, the best international signing in the CPL. Got to be a buy. I was trying to mean think. I uh, tried to think of some alternatives. I can't really come up with any that have been Im as impactful yeah. as Don Malonga. If I'm picking a younger guy who I think has a big future, I, I would put Daniel Crutzen in there as well. I think he's been really good for Forge, but Malonga right now the best international yeah for me. I'll buy as well. I poured over every team's roster. Yeah. I can't see anyone there. The, the one who hasn't been around for for very long, who seems to have changed his team's fortunes for me, is Michaela Pellucci. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's certainly uh, Valor looks like a, a different team at least going forward. Um, but yeah, it, to me, Malanga's the the best international in this league. I'm laughing at this next one because I remember Terry Dunfield saying on the broadcast he wanted to throw the Peacock Plate out the window. <laughs> but quickly, let's go. Uh, let's go with Valor being contenders for the Peacock Plate, which has everybody knows is third place in the CPL as brought to you by Asa Raymond of One Soccer. Yeah, I'll buy. I think they're contenders. For third uh, place. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I, I, I think York 9 has is, is obviously hit a bit of a slump right now and is struggling. I do think the top three will be Cavalry Forge and FC Edmonton. Edmonton are a really good home team. They know how to grind out results and I think that'll be enough to, to get them in the top three. But Valor are a contender. You've already given them third already, place. Yeah, I've already so given them a, a good sure. shot at third place. So yeah, I, uh, Rob Gale, the, the P 
peacock plate might be coming your way. It's been a few guys we've rot we've rotated through top keeper in the league this season. Ingham was there to start. Obviously, you know we've we've kind of gone on a, on a different direction with him. Uh, Marco Carducci was there. Maybe a few goals that went in that maybe he should have stopped. Now are we buying or selling finally Connor James as the best goalkeeper in the CPL? So I'm still on the Carducci train. He's still the guy for me. Um, didn't play the be his best two matches in the Montreal tie, but for me, he's still the technically cleanest keeper, looks the most confident in his goal. And then James has had one or two shaky moments as well, as good as he's been. So it's still Carducci for me. Kurt Larson has got me to buy this one. <laughs> um, I think we've actually had this question three times already. Probably, sale, yeah. and, probably and I've, I've sold every time. I'm buying this time because I feel like Carducci has, the, like they're, they're both very, very good. There's nothing against uh, Carducci, but I would say that Cavalry's back line is yeah. just that yeah. much better than FC Edmonton's, so I have to give it to Connor James. All right, let's go with two more of these, then we'll get on to the weekend. Uh, Taryn Campbell to win Golden Boot. Are we buying or selling Campbell to remain ahead of uh, everybody else in the Golden Boot race? Buy. I think he's arguably the best natural goal scorer in the league. Does he have some other shortcomings? Maybe. Um, but Taryn Campbell knows how to score, and he's going to start at centre forward, I think, pretty much every game between now and the end of the season. That's, that's, that's the thing for me, right? When you look at his games played and minutes played, yeah. he's just been so consistent. The Canadian Hulk, Mike? Uh, no, and I'm going <laughs> to sell that. I think Borges, both Borges and Malanga could potentially pass him. Malanga might rest a few games, so I'll disagree with you there. Last one for buy or sell this week. Forge ending Calvary's unbeaten run this Sunday. Does Forge have what it takes? I'm going to sell. Uh, I think Forge would love to play this game if they, you know, the way they want to play it, if they didn't have the Olympia games either side. Um, you know, I think it's one that, that Forge have definitely been looking forward to getting back on the field with Cavalry, but I just think the CONCACAF League is going to force them to make some changes and, and potentially could weaken their team. So I, I think Cavalry will get something. I will sell as well. I think Forge have bigger fish to fry this week with the, uh, with the Olympia series. I think Cavalry takes that game they're loose they, they've got nothing to nothing to sort of uh, hold them back uh, you know, forge they've they've got other things to think about forge coming off a win uh, I think Calvary at this point I think they're gonna take a little bit of our advice and maybe rest a few players Camargo's out are they gonna take a full roster to Hamilton and uh, and run it out there I don't think so and I don't think they should with the CPL championship berth already locked up when we get back though we'll talk a little bit more about that match and the other two games this weekend here on one soccer